Right now, I'm standing on two different worlds. One foot rests on the edge of ancient Gondwana, a continental crust forged over 500 million years ago, and the other is atop what used to be an ocean floor and volcanic islands, later crushed and welded into Victoria. This invisible line beneath me, the Moiston Fault, is where Victoria was born. So how did a colossal crack come to lie hidden beneath the quiet farmlands of Western Victoria? What secrets does this ancient scar keep locked away below the surface? The Moiston Fault, awe-inspiring yet invisible to the eye, invites such questions. Could this deep fracture plunge nearly to the planet's mantle, tens of kilometres beneath our feet? And why did geologists hail it as one of Victoria's most significant geological marvels? A key to understanding the land's most dramatic chapters of the distant past. For now, the Moiston Fault lies mostly silent and unseen beneath the surface. If you drive through Western Victoria, near the small town of Moiston or the foothills of the Grampians, nothing obvious betrays the presence of a giant fault underfoot. The land is tranquil, gentle pastures, vineyards and weathered hills stretching under wide skies. Yet far below, marking the boundary between two vastly different realms of ancient rock, the Moiston Fault runs on. It is a profound fault in the Earth's crust that has literally shaped the foundations of this region. To uncover the origins of this fault, we must journey back in time, hundreds of millions of years. Picture the scene about half a billion years ago, in the late Cambrian period. The ground beneath Victoria was nothing like today's. To the west of where the town of Moiston now lies, an ancient block of continental crust formed part of the Gondwana supercontinent. To the east stretched a vast ocean basin, floored by dense volcanic crust and dotted with fiery volcanic islands. This primordial landscape was on a collision course. Over tens of millions of years, tectonic forces pushed that oceanic realm inexorably toward the continental block. The dense ocean floor began to descend beneath the edge of the western landmass in a process called subduction. As the ocean basin gradually closed, molten rock from the sinking plate filled arcs of volcanoes along the continental margin. At the same time, not all of the seafloor was consumed. Some chunks of oceanic crust and island arcs were scraped off and welded onto the continent's flank instead of sliding into the depths. The pressure between the converging plates built and built, silently warping the crust, until eventually it reached a breaking point. Around 500 million years ago, that pressure was released in a violent crescendo. The colliding plates unleashed a mountain-building cataclysm that geologists call the Delamere orogeny. The Earth's crust crumpled like a rug shoved against a wall. Layers of rock buckled and stacked atop one another along massive thrust faults. Some sections of crust were forced deep underground, so deep that heat and pressure transformed them into new metamorphic rocks. The ground heaved with powerful earthquakes, and volcanoes erupted as the intense compression sought any outlet. Amid this upheaval, an ancient volcanic island arc, now known as the Stavely Arc, was caught in the crush. This arc had formed earlier, along a subduction zone on the oceanic margin of Gondwana, erupting with basalt and andesite in the Cambrian seas. But during the Delamerian orogeny, it was violently accreted onto the continental edge. The once active arc, a fiery chain of volcanic islands, was now gripped by tectonic forces that folded, faulted and partially buried it. What had once been submarine lava flows and volcanic ash was transformed into greenstones and schists, caught up in the roots of rising mountains. The Stavely Arc became a prisoner of the mountain building event, a volcanic past frozen in stone, welded forever into the growing bones of Australia. This arc was, surprisingly, only recently discovered thanks to geophysical tools like magnetics, and it is now under investigation to unlock the mineral riches of copper and gold that remain hidden beneath the sediments of the Murray and Otway Basin. When the fury finally subsided, the geography of Victoria was forever transformed. A towering range of mountains now stood where an ocean had once been, and running beneath those newborn mountains was the great suture where two pieces of the crust had become one, the Moiston Fault. Now, speaking of keeping things together, this video is sponsored by Odoo, the all-in-one business platform that helps you streamline the moving parts of your business. And today, I want to highlight one of its most useful features, invoicing, available inside both the accounting app and the website app if you're running an e-commerce store. Creating an invoice of Odoo takes just a few clicks. It pulls in your products, customer info, taxes, everything's ready to go. 
and you can fully customise the layout to fit your brand, from logo and font to colour and style. It's quick, clean and looks incredibly professional. Odoo also makes it easy to track payments. You can see exactly when an invoice has been paid. No more chasing people up or wondering if the money's coming through. Regional taxes are calculated automatically, and a dashboard gives you a real-time view of all payment statuses, including partial payments. When you send the invoice by email, your customer can pay right away using PayPal, credit card, debit card and more, directly from the Odoo portal. There's no need for a separate payment system. So whether you're managing your books or running an online store, Odoo's invoicing tools make getting paid easy. To try it out, head to the link in the description or the pinned comment and get started for free. Thanks to Odoo for sponsoring this video. It was along this line that rocks on the west and rocks on the east were forever joined, though each side retained a different memory of its origins. For the rocks west of the Moiston Fault, the Delamarian orogeny was the climax of their upheaval. After that, they lay mostly silent, gradually wearing down over time. But to the east of the Fault, the story was far from over. About 50 million years later, in the Ordovician period, New tectonic forces ignited other sequences of mountain building events in eastern Victoria. Over the next 100 million years or so, a series of geologic convulsions, collectively known as the Lachlan Orogeny, folded, faulted and uplifted the crust on the eastern side of the state. The goldfields of Ballarat and Bendigo were created during these events. The land east of the Moiston Fault was repeatedly reshaped, while the land to the west remained comparatively stable. During those later upheavals, the sedimentary and volcanic layers east of the Moiston Fault were crumpled and fractured into complex folds. Each crack opened and along these fissures, hot, mineral-rich waters flowed, depositing quartz veins laced with gold deep in the bedrock. Meanwhile, on the western side, the ancient crust experienced little of this chaos. The mountains raised by the Delamarian collision long before had been steadily eroding into gentler hills. Over time, the contrast became stark, East of the Moiston Fault rose rugged, gold-bearing highlands born of later orogenies, while west of it lay quieter hills of much older, already weathered rock. By the end of the Paleozoic Era, around 250 million years ago, the grand drama of mountain building in Victoria had drawn to a close. The once lofty ranges on both sides of the Moiston Fault were steadily worn down by wind and rain into rolling hills. Australia found itself part of the stable interior of the supercontinent Gondwana, and the Moiston Fault, having been the scene of titanic collisions, fell into a long silence. In the Mesozoic Era, the time of dinosaurs, when Gondwana began to break apart and new rift valleys opened in what is now southern Australia, even those distant events did little to awaken the slumbering Moiston Fault. This ancient line in the crust remained a dormant weakness. It may have subtly influenced where later earthquakes struck or where sediments collected into basins, but it never again unleashed the kind of upheaval it had in the Paleozoic. Over the eons, the fault zone was buried under newer layers of rock. Eventually, volcanic plains and fertile soils covered the region, masking any trace of the deep scar below. To a casual observer, the location of the Moiston Fault became indistinguishable on the surface, its epic tail hidden in a geological record and revealed only through scientific investigation. Indeed, it is through science that the Moiston Fault's presence and enormity have been brought to light. Geologists mapping Victoria noticed that to the west of a certain north-south line, the bedrock consists of very different material than the bedrock just to the east. On the west side, they found ancient igneous and metamorphic rocks that had been deformed in the early Cambrian collision, whereas on the east side they found younger sedimentary and volcanic rocks with entirely different structures. This stark contrast in rock types was a crucial clue to the fault's location. In addition, sensitive gravity and magnetic surveys detected a long, linear zone where the properties of the underlying rocks change abruptly, corroborating the existence of a major boundary underground. To probe even deeper, scientists conducted seismic reflection studies, essentially an ultrasound of the Earth's crust along this zone. The seismic waves revealed the subsurface structure. There, dipping gently eastward, was the signature of the Moiston Fault slicing down through the crust. Astonishingly, the seismic data showed the fault plane extending roughly 30 to 40 kilometers into the Earth, essentially reaching the base of the crust where it meets the mantle. In other words, this is no mere surface crack, but a colossal structure cutting through the entire thickness of the continental crust. It is literally a fundamental partition in the foundations of Victoria, 
confirming why it is held up as a pivotal fault line of the region. The true wonder of the Moiston Fault lies in what it represents. It is the scene between two distinct geological worlds, two chapters of Earth's history that were welded together long ago. If you could stand astride this invisible line, you would have one foot on rocks that were once part of an ancient continental fragment, and the other foot on rocks that began as an ocean floor and volcanic island arcs. It is like straddling two different ages of the Earth. To the west beneath one boot are rocks forged in the early Cambrian and later hardened by the Delamarian collision, while to the east, under your other boot, are rocks that originated as seafloor sediments and island chains, later crushed during younger orogenies. This dramatic contrast, all converging at a single boundary beneath the soil, is exactly why geologists consider the Moiston Fault the most important fault in Victoria. It marks the very spot where Australia's ancient core and an added piece of crust were stitched together. Without it, the geology of Victoria as we know it would not exist. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.